lost in here raving Eyes are flashing blue All the living that you're saving Won't buy dreams for you Hey, Mike's Music Method. How's everyone doing? Today we are doing Towns Van Zant, Columbine. Another great song. If you don't know it, go look it up. Uh, if anyone knows of a live version, comment down below. I would love to hear a live version of this. I know of none. So this is a great town song. It's not a oh, super beginner piece, but it's not too hard. If you're a beginner, click here, the Travis Picking playlist, follow along. Uh, but if you know, if you're kind of kind of new to finger picking, you can handle it. At least look at the first two measures because they're beautiful. And this whole song is really engaging despite it being like C to F the entire time. It's repetitive, but still it's designed in such a way that you're, you keep, you're really drawn into the picking. At least I am. So it's a wonderful tune. We're going to learn it. And oh, Capo's way up on the seventh fret. I know that seems silly, but I've listened and tried it many different ways and it's just got to be there. So I know it seems high up, but it happens. Dylan does it sometimes. Sometimes you just got a real high capo. And another thing, I wanted to thank all of my patrons out there. Anyone who's donating at PayPal, Patreon, um, BTC, I deeply appreciate it. I the, the, What I'm trying to do here is just build like a great music community. I want some 12-year-old, 15 years from now to be able to find these videos and get access to the tab, and I want to have nothing behind a paywall. And some, you know, some 50-year-old guy who's out of a job and not a nasty divorce who's just trying to pick up the guitar and play some good songs. I want this channel to be here and not have anything in the way, you know, between the content and them, the, the musical knowledge, the finger-picking knowledge, and them. So anyone can access it, but if you have the means and you're getting value from this channel, maybe... You know, you got a hundred bucks a month. Think of it like music lessons. Maybe it's 30 bucks a month, 10 bucks, a dollar a month, whatever you can offer. Not only are you like, oh, I'm paying Mike for my time, but you're also doing a charitable thing by making these videos available for everybody. And if you guys buy me a little time, I can start dedicating more time to this, bring more content. I want to tackle the whole Towns Van Zandt catalog. I know it's lofty, but we can do it. I know we can do it. We'll do it together. And so just thank all my patrons and um, anybody watching, welcome, sub, share. I'm always doing a Zoom meeting on Thursday night. That's tonight, but that's a lie because I won't have this posted by then. But down below, we're always doing Zoom meetings. Come join the fun. We just talk shop and talk music. End rant, but I just wanted to say hey to y'all instead of jumping right into the song. Because I, I miss you. Even, you know, I know you, but I don't know you. I kind of know you. And we'll comment below. Always feel free to drop me an email if anyone wants to you know, chat or has any questions on this stuff. And that's it. Hi, I'm Mike. Let's play some Towns Van Zandt together. Yes, we're gonna have fun with this one. First measure. Again, capo is way up on seven. I am gonna hold down the C chord for this entire measure. Even though it doesn't look like it starts that way, that's what's going on. We're gonna get to all these notes in there. So you got that C chord there. We're hammering the fourth string but I'm gonna lift my finger and hammer that middle finger down on the fourth string. I'm attacking it with my thumb. And then it's the thumb on the third string right after. And the and is on the second string with the index finger. I keep missing. <laughs> You're not alone. That's the first half of the measure. One and two and. Hammer, two and. The second half of the measure is the fifth string. Now the thumb plays the fifth string. So we're out of order here, right? We're doing four, three, five, three with our thumb. Hammer, three, five, three is an overall pattern. So the second half, we got the third fret on the fifth string. Immediately, first string, I'm doing my middle finger there, open. Then the third string with the thumb. And then the second string with the index. So the strings are five, one, three, two, thumb, middle, thumb, Again. It's a lot of fun once you get it down. You might have to do it 1400 times. Second measure is really straightforward. We're doing a little bass walk, third fret on the lowest string, the sixth string. 
then the second fret on the fifth string, third fret, same string, then open on the third. And it's all downbeats. One, two, three, four. So measure one and two together. Slow, three, four. Measure three is the start of the verse, but it's exactly the same as measure one. Then he's playing an F chord. What I'm doing is I'm going to wrap my thumb around because it's easy for me to do. And he's going into an F chord, but you're really just hitting the two Fs. So the first fret on the sixth string and then the third fret on the fourth string. And then right back to a C chord and he's hitting five, three. Might be tricky to get used to that. I suppose you could play a big F chord if you wanted to. For me, it's way easier just going from that C to the F like that. Right, C to F. And you might just practice, you know, depending if you can't do the thumb, just practice doing that switch really clean. Because it's kind of tricky. And then when you get it all together. F chord, just six and four. Then a C chord, five and three. That's it. And this beautiful hopping, sing-songy thing just goes back and forth between that C and F a whole bunch. So we go to measure five, which is the same as measure one and three. That same hammer-on pattern. Straight back to the F, but it's a little different. So now, the way I play this F, I've talked about this a bunch, but I'm barring one, one, two, three. Then my thumb's playing that low one. So you need nothing on the fifth string. Towns is always skipping that string. Most guys who bar the, play the F chord this way, um, finger it this way, your bass is always doing six to four, so you can free up some other fingers to do the melody stuff instead of, you know, slamming down that big bar chord and feeling like you're stuck with only a little pinky getting some movement. So we've got it like this. And so I'm on measure six here. I'm doing the lowest string to the highest, thumb, middle, and then my thumb jumps all the way to the third string here. Got that high note in there. So six, one, three, and that's thumb, middle, thumb. And then right back to the C chord. Five, three, thumb, thumb. Make sure you can hop through it without anything buzzing. Get some good clarity in there. Go slow. And the pace is so quick that, you know, you can deaden the sound. It's not really going to be noticeable when you change the chord. It's not like it has to be perfectly legato because the tempo is so fast once you get it up to speed measure seven right back to that f chord we pinch now six and two and the thumbs alone on three then we have a very cool walk one two three the threes in the next measure we'll get there so pinch uh six and two third string and then we're gonna walk one two and then right into the next measure a quick review, I don't want to lose anybody in the overall flow, so let's play it from the top, measure one. We're going to repeat these first two measures twice, so three, four, we got the intro. Does it again. Then he starts singing, toss and head. We'll get to talk about the vocals later. The F chord, back to the C. F, pinch the F. Five, six, seven, eight. I should be able to count quicker than that. They're in groups of four, my groups of four. Four, eight, 12, 16, I need to practice that. So we're on a G chord here. The thumb's going from six to three. And so we have six, three, six, and, which and that ends the first string, middle finger. So six, three, six, and three. And we're doing two second string with our index finger there. So the end of the measure is six, one, three, two. And the fingers are thumb, middle, thumb, index. So that whole measure. It's nice jumping that thumb. Towns does that all the time. That goes from the sixth to the fourth string to give it this big space. Sounds like jumpy and it really separates the low bass of the guitar from the higher end, which really makes it sound like two guitars um you know the first time i heard towns i i was wondering like what is going on one guitar is just playing high another one low but it's 
that cool finger picking style. And measure eight leads right into nine. <laughs> As if one didn't lead into two. But, but this one, you're kind of doing the same run. It's going from a G to a G7. So here we have a G7. So I'm moving my pinky down to the first fret. And my pinky goes to actually the second string on the third fret. So it's a G7 chord, right? Normal kind of open G7 chord. But my pinky goes down on the third fret of the second string. So I'm using all my fingers here. And it sounds like this. I'll play it first. Kind of a tricky one. I am playing, let's do the first half. Um, the strings are six, one, three, two. And I'm doing thumb, middle, thumb, index. Then the second half of the measure, you're doing six, one, but you lift that first finger. And then you do the third string. So it's easy, it's just six, one, three. Thumb, middle, thumb, but make sure you lift that first finger there. So do it slow from the top, three, four, six, one, three, two, six, lifted one, three, six, one, three, two, six, lifted three. Oop, I messed it up now. There we go. Huh, I gotta practice that. I'm lifting it at the wrong time. you I'm sorry sometimes it's my brain working through it it can be harder to slow things down when you are used to practice practicing them at tempo so never you know don't fear you're on your own time according to the beat of your own drum the way your own heart desires you to practice do it that way listen to yourself and your own ability you know what I'm saying let's put eight and nine together here it's a Tricky transition, so let's go slow. Three, four. Really beautiful, cool finger work happening there. So again, three, four, six, three, six, one, three, two. Move that first finger and the pinky. So it's a little dance, watch my left hand here. Put my first finger down while my pinky goes to that third fret. Then you lift the first finger. So a lot happening in that left hand while you already have this complicated right hand pattern. But really enjoy it. Have fun with these two measures. I always recommend making a little study piece. You know, take that pattern, try it on a, a different chord. I know that it's harder with all that melody movement, but, you know, just do it slower. Try it at different speeds, different tempos, different rhythm em emphasi, emphasises and kind of make it your own and really land softly on it. Measure 10 back to a simple C chord. I'm pinching five and two. So pinch five, two, three alone with the thumb. And I'm hammering on the fourth. I lift the middle finger, hammer, and then the thumb's on the third. Measure 11, we know this trick. You already know this trick. You go to that F chord with the thumb and the bass, and right back to the C. All right, we've seen that before. Pinch, six and uh, two, thumbs on three, and then we go to a C chord, and it's just five, three. Then back to the fun measure. That was measure 12, right? No, four, yeah, 12, look at me. I don't have to count four, eight, 12. I know how to do this. And let's just keep rolling because it kind of repeats. 13, we have, right, just that quick F, but the strings are six, one, three, and then to the C chord, five, three, right back to the F, and it's a little extended here on the F. I don't think we've seen that yet. I'm pinching six and two, thumbs on three, and then it's six, one, three, so that is measure 14. And that can be hard for a lot of people to, to get this bar, right? So you, often you can get away with just playing the second string. But here we need that first finger to be barring the first string as well. 
which is even harder to do it with a thumb. I'm able to do it. It's actually kind of hard with the capo up here because I don't have much room. Usually I'm tucking my elbow like in when I'm playing it here to get the thumb. It's easier to tuck it in because then I can angle that. Here I can't get the angle unless I'm, <laughs> I do this, <laughs> which is absurd. <laughs> Um, so you can play the F as a bar chord there if you want to, if it's too tricky to do that bar with the thumb on top. Whatever works for you. Um, yeah, no reason you couldn't play a full bar here. And the next measure just staggers it. So let's 13, 14, 15. Darn it, I counted that time. So 15 still an F chord, right? That's all an F chord, and we're doing 6, 3, 6, 1, 3. And then back to the C, and we've seen this measure before too, right? Five, three, hammer the four, three. So from measure 13, that's where all those Fs start. Let's do that. C, pinch. Back to the C. If you're getting lost in the detail, don't worry. We're gonna review it all again soon. I'm not going to review it quite yet because it's just, you're really getting used to jumping back between those C's and F's. Once you get the pattern down, it's it's not going to be all that hard for you, I promise. So measure 17, just that quick F again, 6, 1, 3, right back to the C, 5, 3, then we have that hammer on part, same as measure 1, and that same walk, and believe it or not, that's the entire song. There's a little transition part, and that's that's it. You already did it. Pat your own back. Now let's really smooth it out. We'll talk about how to put the lyrics over it, but you're there. We're already there. At this point, it might be helpful to just look at the chords and get a feel for when they change. So maybe put the song on and strum the chords and you're basically just going through mainly C, Fs. That's the one, four, right? The key of C, C, D, E. F is the four, C, D, E, F, G. The G is the five, another song in one, four, five. Um, so just get used to when he's switching them. And maybe for now you're just strumming and not even thinking about the picking pattern and just really get a feel for, for what each chord sounds like, maybe over which words he's transitioning or Hopefully the real end goal is just to get a feel uh, for the sound. I'm like, oh, I know he's changing here and that sounds more like a four than a five. And I know that sounds like maybe impossible for you to do now, but I promise like there, internally, you'll, you'll start to get a little bit better at it and more often than not, you'll, you'll get the one, four or the five right. So start doing that. Let's do a slow run through now and then we will do the final little transition and the ending, and then I'll put it together with the lyrics for you guys. But let's, everything I've shown you, let's do a run through of that. So I'm gonna start right at the top. Two, three, four. Oh, three, four. exceptions though. In the recording you'll hear everything fall apart kind of disappear at the two minute mark except for his guitar and this is the part I'm going to show you. We already know the pattern but he's just messing with the order. So if you look at my tab we're on 17, 18, 19, 20 <laughs> and we've got this same walk as always. To the F we know this part but then he goes right back into the hammer on and then the walk. 
but the band kind of falls apart and it just highlights Towns as really cool playing in that moment. That's the moment you don't want to mess up your picking, all right? The pressure's on, there's no drummer, the band is silent, don't screw up. And then the end of the song is just this. He does that same walk at the end measure, but instead of hitting the three, he just strums an entire C chord there. And you got it. Let's put some words to it. From the top with the lyrics, so you've got that little intro part that happens twice, then measure three. We start with the words right away. Tossing hair raven. Again. Tossing hair raven. And that's all silent. Then measure seven. Eyes are flashing blue. All the. Now that's probably the trickiest part because you're doing that crazy fill. And he comes in with the words there, all the living that you're saving. So um, let's go from the top again. Three, four, tossing hair raven. Eyes are flashing blue. All the living that you're saving. So all the, I'm playing that from measure nine. Oh. All the living that you see just comes in at the end there. So I've got a scroll. Here's measure 13. Yeah, let me go a little bit more. And then 14, he starts singing again. Won't buy dreams for you. else to discuss probably tricky slow it down I've talked about this in other videos but be incredibly slow and deliberate so I'll show you it as like total beginner mode what it might look like so you don't feel embarrassed like what I'm just not getting it the first few times you finger pick and do it it's gonna be difficult it, it might feel impossible and I went through these tips before I'll explain it again really quick maybe you're just playing the chords and singing the song make sure you can do that no hard effort, just down strums. Then only add the thumb and sing. See if you can sing playing the thumb parts. Then maybe you're adding one, only the index finger, right? So you're building gradually while you sing to give your brain time to focus. Focus. And then you might be super slow when you got all your fingers here, right? Toss in, toss in head. And this is also good help for your singing because when you sing things really quick, sometimes you realize that in between notes, you're not actually on pitch. How many notes down am I supposed to go there? Or does he go up? Or So it's also great practice for that. Toss in hair, toss in hair. And kind of just pinpoint where the vocal is hitting with what beat of the song or what finger. Toss in hair, raven. Toss in practice because you've got your own practice to do but that's what it looks like go as slow as you have to repeat it as often as as you have to get out the magnifying glass zoom in on one measure in one part in one moment and work it out and don't be ashamed if you have to do it 1400 times you might have to do it 1400 times if you want to be a really great guitarist and singer there are going to be many passages that you're going to have to do 1400 times i hate to be the one to break it to you I should make a video, how to learn guitar in 30 years. Click here right now immediately, learn this secret. 
and the secret is to learn guitar in 30 years. Clickbait. That's good clickbait, isn't it? Learn this song in 30 years. Click here immediately to get your instant gratification in, th in 30. There's a better way to summarize this joke. You get the joke, I'm not succinct. Songwriting moments. Before I give you a bunch of slow run-throughs, let's kind of just do a very brief overview of what is happening in this song, right? So key of C, we talked about 145, C, F, G, that's all Towns is giving us. And just listen to how, how lovely the melody goes with it. So I'm just gonna take the third stanza here just to sing something different. We have, um, watch the pedals dancing. We already have like a nice conclusion there, right? One, four, one, that could be like the end of the song. Watch the pedals dancing. It's already a little mini conclusion, right? The key is established very quickly with a nice little cadence. And then right back to the F, right back to the four chord. See them twirl and sing. And that five chord introduces that kind of distance from the key. And this is like already the highlight of the melody almost. It happens quick in the song um, because the G is the five chord and it leaves us hanging, right? We want to go back to the one. We want to go back to the C chord. The five is a dominant, its tendency is to bring us back to one. And that's what he does. All your pride and prancing. And that, that third line there is the same as the first, right? Ba -ba -da -ba 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 -da. One is the same as three. And now two is gonna four is gonna be a little different than two. How much does it mean? He doesn't give you the five there. And I think the reason is it would be a little too sing-songy if it was just that same pattern over and over again. So that last time, the cadence isn't, isn't quite as powerful. So it has like a, a little kind of wilting ending as opposed to how that second line ended on that G further away. So it gives you that kind of distance only once in that whole stanza. Watch the pedals dancing. One, four, one. Then he goes back to four. See them twirling. Instead of going back to the one, it gives you the five. Sing. And the melody gets lifted. Gives you the first one again, because your ears are already used to it. All your pride and prancing. And then a little different. How much does it mean? It'd be too cheesy if you went up high again. How much does it mean? It just gives you the four to one. And that's the whole entire tune. And yet it's so beautiful. Nothing super out of the ordinary, just taking simple elements and using them wisely. A video in the future, I'll go into the melody writing, like what the intervals are, and maybe that will kind of reveal more. But for now, just think about the chords and, and feel the melody and into it what is happening. And maybe steal this chord progression. Maybe you're just gonna try to write your own melody to it. And just rip off a of Towns, learn from the greats. Nice and slow, the whole thing from the top. Remember you got your, download the YouTube app or use your computer, click on that little gear icon and if you need it slower, even slower, slow it down more, 0.75. If I'm doing it too slow, bump it up a little bit. Two, three, four. transition part of two minutes, three, four,
play it again. Keep practicing at that tempo or a slower one. You're going to get it. You're going to do fine. You're going to enjoy playing it and sharing it with other people. God bless you all. Christ is with us. We know this trick. You already know this trick. You might have to do it 1,400 times.